Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can set up username and password-based authentication with Vapor using Turnstile. Turnstile is a security framework for Swift. It's built into Vapor by default, and it also has integrations for other popular server-side Swift frameworks, such as Perfect. The idea is you can use Turnstile to restrict access to certain parts of your web app based on whether the user is authenticated and what they should have access to. Turnstile comes with a piece of middleware that sits between your web requests and makes sure that users only have access to what they should. By default, Turnstile comes with support for basic username and password authentication and also basic Google and Facebook authentication. In this screencast, we'll get started with Turnstile by implementing the simplest type of authentication, username password authentication. Let's dive in. I have a Vapor project here that has some code to let me register users, which basically means create some users in the database. I can create a new user here to try it out, and it prints out the list of users to verify that it works. That printing out of the users was just for testing. Let's start by changing that to the desired behavior, which is after you register, it should redirect to the root of the app, slash TIL in this case. The first step to support authentication with Turnstile is to make a class that conforms to the user protocol. We already have a user object, so let's open it up and import auth, and then mark this class as conforming to the user protocol as well. The main requirement of conforming to user is to implement the authenticator protocol. Let's create an extension for this to keep things organized. The first method we need to implement is called authenticate and it takes some credentials. There are various types of credentials supported by Turnstile and you can even create your own. Basically, you only need to worry about the types that your app supports. Let's start by saying if the credentials are username password credentials, which is a built-in type, which you guessed it, contains a username and password. For us, the username is going to be the user's email address. So we'll query the user's table looking for a user with that email address. If we find one, we'll check to see if the password matches the hash that we've stored in the database. At this point, we've implemented the case when the user first logs in. But what about subsequent API calls? We need to have a way of telling if the user is authenticated and if so, what the current user is, but we don't want to have to send the username and password for every single web request. Like many web frameworks, Vapor solves this to the concept of sessions. From a high level, the idea is Vapor stores some information about the current user into a database table called sessions. It then sends the web browser an identifier for the session as a cookie. From then on, whenever the web browser sends a subsequent request, it sends that cookie back to Vapor, allowing Vapor to look up that user information again. In our case, Vapor will be storing the user ID for the authenticated user in the session, and it will pass that ID to us. It's our job to look up that user ID from the database. That way we know A, that the user is still valid, and B, that we have all the user's latest information, which will come in handy later. Let's take a look. Here, I'll add another case where the credentials are an identifier for the user which was stored in the session. I'll simply look to find a TIL user with the user ID stored here. That's the only type of credentials we need to store in this app, so I'll throw an error in any other case. If the user exists after all this, then I'll return it, otherwise I'll throw an error. There's one other method we need to add called register, but this isn't necessary because we already wrote our own code to register a user, so I'll just return an error. Now our model object is set up to authenticate users. Now let's set up our authentication middleware and set up a user interface for this. I'll open main.swift, import auth, and add a new configurable to the droplet. This is how you add middleware in Vapor, and we want the middleware called auth middleware. We'll set the user to our TIL user. This works because we've already made TIL user conform to user. We also give a name for this middleware. Auth is fine. Whenever you add a new middleware to Vapor, you need to enable it in the droplet.json. So I'll just add this to the bottom of the list. Next, I'll open login.leaf and create a full width row 
with fields for email, password, and a login button. I'll also include a link to the register page. Back in tilcontroller.swift, I'll import turnstile. I'll first add a method to return the login template that we just created. I then add a login method. This will check for the email and password and create a new username, password, credentials with these two items. Vapor's request has an auth property that you can use to log in and log out. We'll call login here and we'll pass in our credentials. Under the hood, eventually that will call the authenticate method on our TIL user object with those same credentials. When this is done, I want to redirect to the root of the web app. Finally, I need to register routes for these two methods. The first will handle a get to slash login, and the second will handle a post to slash login from the form. Oops, I had an extra closing bracket here. Let me delete that. Let's try this out. I'll go to slash TAL slash register and create a new user. Then I'll go to slash TAL slash login and enter a bad password, and it rejects me. Now I'll go to slash TAL slash login and enter the correct password, and it lets me in. So far so good, but let's finish hooking this up to the rest of the web app. Currently it's hard coded to always think that you're the first user and obviously we don't want that. So I'll open up TALcontroller.swift to modify index view to get the current authenticated user rather than this temporary measure that simply gets the first user. Let's review how this works. After we go to slash login, Vapor stores the user ID for the authenticated user in the session and sends the web browser a identifier for the session as a cookie. Then next time the web browser goes to another page like slash TIL, it sends that session identifier that was stored in the cookie back to Vapor. Vapor then finds the user information that's stored in that cookie, which is just the user ID, and passes it to our authenticate function. Our authenticate function then uses the user ID to look up that user in the database and get all the fields that we need. There are a few changes left to make. In add acronym, let's delete this test user and instead get the authenticated user and create an acronym with that. Inside register, it would be nice to immediately log in the user after registration. So let's set up some credentials and call login. Finally, let's implement the logout method, which will simply call auth.logout and redirect to the root. Of course, we need to add a route for this as well. Now let's go back to the root of the web app, log in and create an acronym. Now we can log out, log in as a second user and create a different acronym. Just to make sure it works, let's log out, log in again as user one. There's our first acronym that we created. We'll log out again, log in as user two. And we see the second acronym we created. Nice. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to authenticate users in Vapor using Turnstile. Believe it or not, I've now made 16 screencasts about Vapor, and I'd like to make some screencasts about other topics too, so I think I'm gonna call it here for now. But I have to say, Vapor is a huge topic and I'd love to dig into it deeper. So if there's interest, I'm actually considering getting a team together to make a book on this topic. So this is something that you'd enjoy. Please let me know, and I'd especially like to hear anything in particular you'd like to see included in a book like this. To sign off this screencast series for now, I'd like to leave you with one final thought. Do you know what Forrest Gump's password is? It's one Forrest one. That's it, I'm out.